Welcome everybody to our second patrol of this war. Our task is still to, let's have a quick look. Our task is still to hunt for targets in the Barren Sea. So this is what we are going to do. Let's go. So yeah, this is the Barren Sea. And I think I'll be simply patrolling from the Arctic Circle to the Finnish uh, to the Norwegian coast. Let's see how this goes. Um, by the way, for the, those of you who don't know, if you left click and hold your mouse, your boat is moving fast. If you right click, then it's moving slow. That way you can sneak up on your targets. I would like for I would like if we had a few more uh, recon assets that could help us to spot targets. Okay, here's something incoming. Oh, what's happening? Okay, let's see what this is trying to say us. So apparently we lost Finland. The armed forces of the USSR lost Finland. Refugees know that the combined committee of the NATO chief... The ten combined committee of chiefs of the NATO headquarters announces the full return of Finland. Masses of Allied tanks and infantry are present and are s fast securing the borders, I think. As civilians vol as civilian volunteers help in getting in the necessary supplies for the civilians, I think. It is alleged as that fierce fighting near the yeah, village, all right. It is alleged that fierce fighting near the town of Helsinki caused particularly large casualties, as civilians could not leave the area when the attacking forces were approaching. The UN Secretary General and the General Assembly accused the military, military of deliberately using local residents as a human shield. Recent successes show that martial law may, may remain in NATO's favor. In the Na Atlantic, NATO's naval forces control several key areas, facilitating the passage of reinforcements and supplies. So this is bad. So yeah, you can see the icon has changed. Helsinki is back in NATO hands. And we still have this group of ships incoming. Oh, they're turning away. No, they're not. What are they doing? I need more recon assets. Yeah, they, they are turning away, but we have boats coming towards the Arctic Circle. U-boats. Yeah, they are, they are trying to make an incursion up here. We'll try to prevent this. There they are. Okay, we have a new sonar contact, bearing 259, designated Sierra 1. We are at a depth of 46 meters and at a speed of 10 knots. There's no surface duct and no thermal layer. Uh, status reports. Yeah, that's all right. Man battle stations. Sierra 1 on our left side. Let's turn to the right. Nautilus? Possible? Very possible, in fact. Sierra 
target solution and apparently they cannot hear me properly they are pretty shallow I'll be going deep to try to turn away and with the dreadnought on this position here yeah I have again no choice we'll try to get as close as possible and yeah then we just have to see the dreadnought on the surface as well? Yeah, pretty much. We are still... No, we are at depth. That's okay. Alright. So... Okay, we have uh, a really good targeting solution on the Nautilus. We can take a look at it now. And we have issues. Two, 
while we have a good solution on the dreadnought. But the Nautilus may wait my torpedo. Actually, it's very likely. If I look at this, it's losing too much speed by doing the zigzag pattern. I'll try to close with the um, Nautilus and then fire another torpedo at it from a closer range. We are still over three kilometers away from it. And we'll deal with the dreadnought a bit later. So yeah, the Soviets, they do have really good torpedoes that are fast. But um, no wires means that once I fire the torpedo, yeah, it just does its thing and have no influence at all. The Nautilus torpedoes are still incoming. Now the question is... Okay, seafloor is rising. Oh yeah, there it is. That's fine though, we still have plenty of seafloor left. Now the question is, does the Nautilus have wire-guided torpedoes? Not too far. Yeah, it does. Mark 37. Mm. And you can see that they are actually, or at least one of them is turning in towards me. So at least one torpedo is still wire-guided. Distance to the Nautilus is now 2.2 kilometers. I will have to come up a bit because the sea floor continues to rise. Yeah, let's do it actually right now. Yeah, one torpedo is absolutely coming towards me. The other one seems to have lost the wire, but one of them is still wire guided. Nautilus is on the surface, so. 7 kilometers closing in rapidly. But now, the end I have to slow down because if I fire a torpedo at this speed, um, it's not gonna work. Is that incoming torpedo? Incoming torpedo. That's picking me up or not? Let's stay like this for the moment. It seems that the torpedo might not pick me up. I hope my torpedo doesn't run into the ground. I think the torpedo lost me against the ground and the Nautilus has lost the wire. So I cannot guide it in anymore. Yeah. The Nautilus lost the wire as the torpedo went active. That's nice. My torpedo has just gone active though. I think. But it's not going up to the surface. I thought I did set it up for that. Oh no. Is it not gonna... God damn it. Load the torpedo, come on guys. I thought I did set it up for surface running. Must have missed it. Doesn't matter. Short activation. Now if this doesn't work, then I know that there's, there's something wrong with the surface setting of these torpedoes. It 
should activate any moment. Yeah, 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 it's going up this way. So I must Mirror. have missed yes, the area. And since we do not want to be a small yes. we will be oh, moving yes, again. Yes, Did the torpedo acquire? Commander, it should it. Yeah, there it goes. It acquired the Nautilus. And our next torpedo is already in the tube. So the advantage of the, the advantage of the 400 mm tubes is that the the smaller torpedoes get reloaded very quickly. Uh, full on nose hit, but not enough to sink it. What is the dreadnought doing? Not much. The Nautilus has received one hit. It's still operational. Hmm. Let's set up a torpedo as a circle search. Should give the Nautilus something to think about. Let's see if this works. Yeah, they, please. So, what the torpedo should do is it should get to its activation point, rise to the surface, and then circle around until it finds its target. But the Nautilus does look a bit. Worse for wear, I think it's having trouble staying on the surface. Okay, hopefully, it doesn't pick up me. Commander, Otherwise, this might have been a mistake, but now the torpedo is circling as intended. Let's actually have a look. Yeah, the Nautilus is having problems. Now the torpedo is coming around and it should acquire the target. Now? Come on. Just outside of the search cone. This is dangerous for me. Nautilus could lure down the torpedo towards me, and then I have my own torpedo to evade. It's still circling around. Will it be drawn by the noisemaker? Or will it be drawn by the Nautilus? Nautilus dropped another noisemaker. Torpedo seems to be still circling. It did not pick up the target. Damn. I'm prepared to fire another torpedo at the target. Yeah, the torpedo is not picking up the Nautilus. So, a few minutes ago, I was raising the set of torpedoes. That was premature. And I have the noisemaker almost directly on me. The Nautilus. I have to fire one of these torpedoes, otherwise. I'll try to get behind it first. Because now nah, this torpedo will not pick it up. Actually, I wanted to zigzag. 
hope it does. There we go, torpedo is turning. Turning, turning, turning. Did it pick up? It picked up the Nautilus, yeah. There we go. By the way, I'm still in danger. Because this torpedo can now make a right turn and come directly for me. Thankfully it's doing a left turn and will reacquire the Nautilus. Now that means this Nautilus is uh, doomed. Yeah. The Nautilus is trying to escape. But it has no chance. so much noise in the water, all these air bubbles, that it should completely mask my own noise signature to the Dreadnought. The Dreadnought should not be able to distinguish between the wreck and me. Yeah, this game is realistic like that. And this is one thing that makes Cold Waters really good. One of the comments on the earlier videos, somebody wrote that Cold War era submarines are somehow spookier than World War II submarines, and I absolutely agree. These really silent hunters are miles apart from what um, the German Navy or the American Navy or any Navy had in World War II. First and foremost, most of the World War II um, submarines of all the navies were designed to operate on the surface, primarily in fact. They were not designed to remain underwater for very long. And that showed they had low underwater speeds, didn't have uh, any extended hydrophone or sonar facilities, only, let's say, towards the end of the war did um, these things become available. But these submarines here, the Charlie, for example, this thing is just... It can stay... It has a nuclear reactor. It can stay underwater as long as the people on board have food and water supplies. That's the only thing, actually the only thing that's limiting the uh, deployment length of these submarines. For how long you can keep... Thank you, Comrade. 
Командир, майор Рокунин, идем за этим курсом. So the only thing limiting the uh, deployment length of these submarines was basically how long you can keep, I guess, about 50 men alive inside a metal tube underwater. That was it. And that's pretty crazy if you think about it. So, but we are still hunting this dreadnought, which should be absolutely able to hear me. So let's actually slow down. It's at the same depth as I am. It's 3.5 kilometers away from me. And my guess is that the dreadnought is preparing to fire. So... Let's see what the dreadnought does. And if the torpedo will hit or not. I'll keep it using the distance. So my guess is he was just attempting to fire at me. And since he detected the launch transient of my torpedo leaving the tube, he decided that he has um, more pressing concerns. Which is totally understandable. Now I'm trying to close the range. So that if I need to fire another torpedo, I can pretty much shoot it directly at him and don't need to worry about him. He's dropping a lot of countermeasures. Let's have a look at the submarine. So yeah, the dreadnought. Interesting dive events. Ah, a nice day in the Arctic Circle. Did my torpedo go active? Now it did. Yeah, let's slow down. My torpedo has absolutely acquired the target. Not. It's going towards one of the noisemakers. But the dreadnought was uh, helpful enough to deploy another noisemaker which brings the torpedo closer to its target. If my torpedo happens to make a left turn after passing this countermeasure, then it should reacquire the dreadnought. Yeah, there we go, there we go, there we go. Oh, the dreadnought is turning in. This is good. I mean, good for him. This is completely the right move to make in this situation. It will force my torpedo to do a full circle. But he has to keep turning for this to work. And he didn't do that. Now the torpedo is acquired. Yeah. The torpedo is going in. And one hit should be enough. No? He's blowing the ballast. Trying to get to the surface. Let's see if this works. Yeah, he can still make it to the surface. He's rising. He's rising to the surface rapidly. And once he's on the surface, he will be able to get the water out of the boat. There he goes. So. 
now his crew has the chance to get off the boat because what I will do now is I will get behind him I will come up to a shallow depth and I think I will fire one of these torpedoes at him to finish him off these torpedoes are not as valuable to me as these are because the SCT-65 it can be um, programmed to have active homing capabilities while the SAET-60M is just passive homing and just for surface ships while these ones can be used for both submarines and surface ships so yeah I'll see what happens he will pass above me any second now there we go we are speeding up. He knows exactly where I am. The question is what he's doing about it. Let's come up to 46 meters. Brace your ears. position any second. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, he's still on the surface, completely helpless. Absolutely helpless. He even slowed down. Okay. A bit. We are way too close to him. For safe torpedo shot, so we will back up. We'll also secure our we'll turn in the submarine to have a really nice shot at him. for my torpedo and there we go target sunk and he's going down quite fast with two big holes Enemies engaged, Nautilus and Dreadnought, sunk both of them, gained some experience. Excellent results, continue the mission. Here is another U-boat force coming towards the Barren Sea. Yeah, we'll try to intercept.
Where are they? Oh, how I hate it when they do that. There they are. Gotcha. Okay. And we will end the episode here. That was a little bit short, but we'll continue right at this point in the next episode. And since the episode was so short, I might upload more than one episode a week. Thank you very much for your time. I hope this was interesting. And I'll see you again soon. Bye bye.